So lazy eye is kind of an older term that most of the younger doctors like myself aren't kind of using as much anymore. And we're trying to phase that term out as a profession. We prefer to diagnose or talk about lazy eye as two different separate things that it could be. One being strabismus and one being amblyopia. And today's video, I'm gonna jump into and talk about those two different things and what we can kind of do about them. Hi, I'm Dr. James Therian with the Eye Doctor Near Me channel, where we talk about eye care, eye care products, and vision. And if you have not already subscribed to our channel, make sure to click that button now. So like I already mentioned, lazy eye is classified as two different things nowadays, either strabismus or amblyopia. So first I'm gonna talk a little bit about strabismus. Strabismus is basically an eye turn. You know, one of these type of things where the eye is turned in on us. Sometimes it's one eye, sometimes they can swap between the eyes. Sometimes the eyes turn out on us instead. And so there's a few different reasons why a strabismus can happen. One is the brain has just decided that it doesn't like both eyes. So it's decided which eye is its favorite and it has turned the other eye in or out on us. Another reason can be because of the fact that we have a large difference in glasses prescription in which the brain has decided to ignore one eye because it's not being corrected and use the other eye. Basically, a lot of prescription in one eye, none in the other eye. Brain says, right eye, you're giving me this awful image. What's going on? Left eye, you're amazing. I love you. Rock on. So the brain ignores that right eye, turning it in or turning it out on us. Um, another reason why it can happen is if we are a very large plus prescription. So basically, if we're extremely farsighted, we can focus really hard to clear up the world off in the distance, but then we've got to really focus hard to clear up the world up close. And so our eye muscles are tied directly to our accommodative ability. And it makes sense because if I'm trying to look at my finger, my eyes need to be pulled way in. Whereas if I'm trying to look at you on the other side of that computer, my eyes need to be kind of lined up here. So some individuals that are just extremely farsighted, an eye will be turned in or turned out on them. And then what happens is we put glasses on and boom, they instantly line back up. And so those are some of the main reasons for strabismus. So now what is amblyopia? Amblyopia, I like to think it's kind of like a pixelated image. So again, if we go back to that patient that has a little bit of prescription in one eye or none in one eye and a lot in the other eye, if the brain does not use the eye, just like any other nerve, it stops utilizing it. If you don't use it, you lose it kind of deal. And so what will end up happening sometimes is the brain will just have that nerve fiber not really work as well firing on all cylinders. The number one treatment for amblyopia and the easiest way to get it fixed is by putting corrective lenses, either glasses or contact lenses on the patient. Now one eye is seeing good image, the other eye is seeing good image. The brain wants to pick up both of them. Now, at the end of this video, I am going to show you a little presentation, a little demonstration of why that isn't always the case. But think of amblyopia as watching or looking at something on one of those old analog TVs that I grew up on, not the 4K, 5K, 578, HD, whatever they got going on now. Think of it as the older analog TVs that we could still see. It's just not quite where we want it to. That's kind of mild amblyopia. Now it can kick up to higher and higher levels. Now the fear with amblyopia is that if we're not seeing that out of that eye, if we're not utilizing it, it will turn into that strabismus where the eye turns in or turns out on us kind of deal. So now what can be done about strabismus, the eye turning in or turning out on us kind of deal? Most individuals instantly talk about vision therapy and most people don't take vision therapy much past patching. That's where you have the glasses on, you have good vision, you put a patch over the good eye, force that eye that's been turned out to be utilized and worked. But what'll happen occasionally is we're not paying attention to what's happening behind this patch on the good eye. So what can happen sometimes is that eye will just drift out or drift in on us. And so essentially they go from being where the one eye is turned all the time on them to where now they're just swapping between which eye they utilize. They just kick back and forth between the two eyes 
and just utilize it. That's called an alternating either esotrope if the eyes are turned in or exotrope if the eyes are turned out. And so while that's not the best thing in the world, it is a step in the right direction. And so what will happen occasionally is patients will do patching for a little while. The eyes will start swapping and they'll say, well, shoot, this isn't working. Or how do you fix the eyes swapping between the two? And the answer is we've got to go from level one vision therapy to level two, which is getting the eyes to work in tandem together. That's by putting something like a red lens over the right eye, blue lens over the left eye, and forcing them to look at a red blue screen so that both eyes are having to get in the game to play along and start being utilized because they like both eyes now. They just don't like both eyes at the same time. And so there is other things we can do with strabismus for vision therapy and vision training type activities. So now what can be done about amblyopia? Kind of similar things as strabismus. Basically what we want to do is we want to get into vision therapy and start getting that individual to use that eye a lot more. That's where first line of defense again in amblyopia is getting the right glasses prescription on the individual. So once we have that, it's about 50% of patients, that eye will start getting picked up and start doing the right thing. Now I'm gonna put a giant caveat that I'll talk about later in this video with this demonstration here in a minute. But that's the number one thing is getting the right glasses or contact lens prescription on. The second thing we want to do is we want to start patching. Now research has said 30 minutes a day doing an activity, not passive, but an active activity is what we need to do. Doing longer than 30 minutes a day really doesn't gain us any ground. It loses a lot of our sanity, which nobody has in an abundance. So we want to make sure that we're saving our sanity as much as we can and focus on doing the patching for only 30 minutes a day. But we can make a whole heck of a lot of ground with the patching with this giant caveat that I'm gonna talk about next. So can vision therapy fix everyone? No, it can't. I'm not gonna to lie to you. It doesn't do any good to say those types of things. It can't fix everything. A lot of times people will fail at vision therapy though because they missed or their doctor missed this crucial piece. And I will use this demonstration in a second to kind of explain it and talk about it. But the reason is because of what's called anisoconia. Basically, if we have one eye that has a lot of prescription, we'll say a plus three, and one eye that has no prescription, we'll say zero, the image size difference between those two eyes kind of starts jacking with the brain. And even with those glasses on, it will still not work to get the brain to pull both eyes in the game. Now, my personal world got affected by this. My wife, whenever she was growing up, she has almost no prescription in her right eye, quite a bit in her left eye. It was about a plus 375 growing up. And so whenever she was trying the patchy and all that stuff, didn't work, didn't, 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 didn't. And so I noticed whenever she was in college and we would be studying, she'd fall asleep really quickly and couldn't kind of hang in there as long as I could for reading and all that kind of stuff. And so as I went through medical school, though, I started reading all about this and saying, this is her. This is her to the T. She never likes to wear her glasses. And the reason why is because that one left eye is getting such a large image compared to the right one that the brain still ignores it. And so it's one of those deals that I talk about this with a lot of my patients. Because yes, if there's more than three diopters, three dollars worth of prescription difference between one eye and the other eye, the brain will ignore those eyes. And a lot of insurance companies, a lot of the vision insurance and discount plans, they realize this and they know that, and they will actually cover a whole lot more money for contact lenses for patients that have that problem typically. And so I'm gonna do a quick demonstration to kind of show you what I'm talking about and why that is a problem once we get to that $3 worth of difference and where image size becomes about a 5% difference between one eye and the other eye. So here is that quick little demonstration that I wanted to tell you about. So let's just say that the right eye is seeing this image with glasses on and the left eye is seeing this image over here. Now, when you cover up one eye versus the other eye, it looks pretty much the exact same way. You really can't tell a big difference between what one eye sees and the other eye sees. And so whenever we're doing those refractions or the patient is checking things out in their glasses, they say, right eye sees great, left eye sees great. So surely we should be doing great whenever both eyes are open because if I cover each one, things look great. But the problem is, is again, if one of them 
is 5% larger than the other one, then we have a big old problem. Some of the image will look really good and about the exact same, but as we drift off to different sides of the retina, things start to get really goofy. And because of that, no one's gonna stay reading, no one's gonna play along with this. So what are they gonna do? They're gonna ignore one eye and go back to this image because that's a whole lot better and easier than this image is. And so this is just what a 5% difference in image size looks like to the brain. So the brain is not going to play along and it's gonna start ignoring something pretty quick. And that's where sometimes in glasses, even with patching or certain vision therapy type activities, we will never get things improved because again, we don't have the right materials to work with. So is there a solution to this anisoconia problem? The answer is yes, and it's actually really simple. So if this is someone's eyeball, glasses sit out here and they have a little distance between the eye that they sit. It's not very far, but that makes it for a smaller or larger image, depending on what the prescription is here. But when we put a contact lens directly on the eye, we no longer have that reverse image, the reverse telescope making things smaller or the binocular effect making things larger. And so the quick answer is we need to put these individuals that have that big difference into contact lenses. So now is when I have a lot of patients ask me, well, how old is it that my kid needs to be in to wear contact lenses? Um, I usually don't like to go with an age on contact lens. I usually go with a maturity level. Are you having to stay on top of them about cleaning their room, brushing their teeth? If you are on those things, then chances are you're going to have to stay on top of them about taking their contact lenses out and cleaning those properly as well. And so that is usually what I use as my gauge on whether or not I can get someone into contact lenses or if they have to stay in glasses. Now, if they have to stay in glasses, there are some unique things we can do to try to get that image size to where it's not that 5% or larger, but maybe a little bit less, but it gets a little challenging and we can't bridge every gap. And so don't hear from me that this is the perfect fix for everyone because it is not, but it should fix a lot of things going on.